Good afternoon and welcome to Unraveled Game Thoughts. I have sort of a random video. Uh, I have today the Obsession Useful Box. Now, the bad news is it's it's hard. It, this is this is not an easy uh, thing to to get. You may not even need it if you have a newer version of Obsession. This is probably superfluous. Um, that being said, I am going to tell you if if you have an older version of Obsession, how you can get this particular uh, useful box. So. Um, and, and that is if, if there are any remaining. So uh, Obsession is created by Dan Halligan. And uh, he is the designer of this game. And if you have a box, and I'll see, you probably there's down here on the back of the box, down here, there's a copyright date. And I hope I'm holding it so it's visible uh, there. And if that copyright date says 2020, then you might want to go to BGG and look up the useful box. And in that information, if, if I, well, I'll put it this way. If it's something you think you, your, your, your copy of the game probably needs, I would go in there and look. Um, I don't want to take the liberty of posting all that information because uh, it's there on BGG. If you go to useful box, you can get the email address to uh, to potentially see if you qualify for this. I would recommend taking a picture of your copyright so you have it, and you can send that to uh, to the email that uh, Dan has provided. So that that's sort of a little bit of background. Uh, I didn't even I just was started looking into this. I was like, oh cool, I'm going to get that, and found that I couldn't get it. Um, but then when I started digging deeper, that's how I found. Oh, there's an email address here. Uh, this is created largely for people like myself who have this earlier copy of the game. And my understanding is these are things that are going to correct some of the uh, bits and pieces that are incorrect in the base game. And I, I'll be honest, I did not, I have not done enough uh, researching as I played this game to see what was correct and what was not correct. Uh, we've just been playing the game and going with whatever it said and doing the best we can. If you're not familiar with Obsession, well, I don't know why you would watch this video at all. Um, <laughs> this is not going to help. I'm not teaching Obsession here. But it is a um, it is set in, in um, I guess you'd say Victorian England. If you're a fan of uh, Downton Abbey, uh, anyway, let's see what's in this box and we'll go from there. So, one, we have some uh, bags and these, I understand, are bags that are sewn without any um, laces or threads coming out on the end. If you have the original game, you probably know that when you open those bags, the strings started coming out, and my understanding is they weren't stitched correctly, and so the company that did them provided bags um, specifically for these boxes uh, to replace those that were incorrectly stitched. So these bags are supposed to have the correct stitching, which uh, is going to not thread the way the original bags did. So that will replace the bags that are in my game here. We have a cook. So why do we need a cook? Well, there's an extra cook in the game because one of the families from the upstairs downstairs expansion starts with the cook. And so by having that, uh, this cook in there, you, can, you don't have to go dig for that cook in the box. So it's very handy from that perspective thing. Because really a lot of the corrections uh, as I understand it, are, are, are regarding cards that had mistakes on them. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, there's this uh, list here uh, tells what, what is corrected 
Um, so the cards that are in need of correction, and I will kind of, I'll try to go through these. There's a couple of, couple of solo cards there. I'll just put those to the side. There's, that's another solo card, another solo, there's quite a few solo cards. So I don't know if those are corrections. I'm not going to worry too much about those. Uh, let's take a look at, these are player aids. So this is all the cards that are coming in. So we have Thomas Esquire. Thomas McMillan Esquire had a grammatical error on the original Obsession card. So this one replaces the original. And then we have Miss Eleanor Brassington. This card corrects a VP error on the original Upstairs Downstairs card. Um, the original granted one VP. Oh, okay, one VP. So this one, and it should have been zero. Uh, so this replaces the original uh, one VP. So, oh, Alexander. Oh, Pinder. There he is. This card corrects a grammatical error on the original Wessex card and replaces the original. He is not family. He's a pauper. So he... I don't know what grammatical error they corrected, but I remember that picture because it cracks me up every time I see it. And then we have the Lady Ethel Fairchild, uh, which is actually a promotional card that can be put into the Prestige deck. So it looks like... I, I'd have to look at the glossary to see what she does. It looks like you can see... Uh, maybe an extra guest as it comes up or I think I think she allows you to see what the next uh, uh, room type that the the folks are the Fairchilds are looking for uh, before it comes up. I think that's what she does. So she will need a new sleeve. And then we have Mr. William Darby um, and he's a, another promotional card that can be added in. He's a casual guest. And we have Miss Prudence Baker. And let's see, this is another promotional card that can be integrated into the Obsession Casual Guest Deck. Okay, so the West Terrace apparently is, uh, can optionally replace the tiles in the base game. Um, the original West Terrace was limited. Uh, prestige rating five tile in the uh, important estate category. The original concept had the family gathered in a private place to, amongst other things, discuss local aristocratic landscape and perhaps turn a critical eye towards any emerging unsavory attachments. Thus, the tile grants a powerful dismissal action on the flip side. However, this tile is rarely used due to the, man the demands on family later in the game to manage activities requiring larger numbers of gentry. So I think uh, when you turn it over... Now it's just a, an ongoing uh, ability where you can discontinue the society of an acquaintance falling into disrepute. So you can basically, every turn, kick somebody out. Uh, and so he's got the, the list here that you can either keep the tile that is already in there, if you like that, or that replaces it. Blah, blah, blah to Michael Clark for the name. Came up with this. Private room for a gentleman who's... Mornings are spent in practical affairs. Um, this is to add utility and interest to the essentials category. Which, except for the private study in the main library, features rather straightforward activities involving several guests and no tile favors. The business room introduces the idea of the family investing in the burgeoning tea trade Consult the unique rules for tile benefits. So on the one side, it says Lord of the Manor investing in the tea trade. Flip this tile and place $200 on it. So you flip it over and then it's got return on investment. On step two, either place $200 from the bank or remove all the lira on this tile and flip it back over. So this is an interesting dynamic where you can put some money on here early in the game and then um, 
as long as you put your own $200 at the beginning of the game, it could really get more, uh, give you a pretty good investment later. That's pretty cool. I like that. In the housekeeper's room, uh, this corrects an error on the original upstairs downstairs tiles. One side incorrectly re references zero VP when both sides should reference one VP. Ah, okay. So I guess in the main room, one had zero and one had uh, one, but I don't think the either they're both supposed to be equal, same on the both sides. Head housemaid may perform any female service role except cook. So now it's appropriately uh, pointed on both sides. We've got a couple, uh, a new dynamic AI. If you're playing solo and uh, six new solo opponents that you can use with the uh, base game and the addition of the upstairs downstairs. Um, so that's uh, pretty handy. And then uh, I will actually probably stow this box after I get everything in one box here. And then we have the player aids, which I believe are supposed to be a little bit uh, better designed for the base game. Um, and it's supposed to match with what is in there um, a little more fluidly. So let me see. It doesn't really say much about that, but I believe on the website it talks about the player aids and how they fit in because uh, there's one for each family we have the milestone symbols we have the passing flow chart uh, for the upstairs downstairs expansion and we have uh, upstairs downstairs people we have dismissing guests and another flow, a seasonal flow chart. So I guess that's for each, each player to have in their deck. And then we have victory point icons, which that's actually, that's pretty handy. Um, I like that. Let's see, is there, how many of these are there? Special actions. I think one of these is kind of designed for, there's round track icons servant icons i think some of these are extra for the base game because of the extra families and some of these are yeah this is the original the original game we probably won't use these because we pretty much only play with the upstairs downstairs expansion well there you go that is the useful box uh, again only going to be helpful for you if you got the original version. My understanding is uh, if you've gotten an updated uh, version of this game um, from 2021 or on, then these things are already corrected. Uh, obviously the promotional bits that were thrown in there uh, was, was Dan throwing in a little extra. I would not be shocked to see those available through some other venue at some point. Uh, maybe if you're uh, at a convention or something of that nature, they might have these. Uh, I could see BGG having some copies of these or something like that, but um, there's only three of them, uh, which is nice to have, and the solo extras, which are nice to have, but I don't know, I, like I don't play the solo very often. I usually enjoy playing it with others more. Um, but yeah, that is the useful box. If this was helpful, great. Uh, give it a like. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching today. And if you see all my other mess here, please forgive that. Um, I've got a little Gloomhaven set up uh, to do a solo uh, scenario. And uh, that will probably be posted later. So I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.